They finally got it. For any sports player anywhere on the planet, this is the pinnacle, lifting a World Cup. Steve Thompson is one of the few who can say he's done it on England's front row in 2003. But he can't remember a single second of the tournament, even when he watches it back. I watch it, but it's like, it's like it's never happened. I know it's on TV there and has, but for me, there's like nothing there. During his 13-year career for club and country, Steve was at the heart of the scrum, one of sport's most destructive, repetitive impacts. At just 43 years old, he has been diagnosed with early-onset dementia and probable CTE, a degenerative brain disease linked to a history of head trauma. How many knocks and concussions would you have had during your career? As I've mentioned 80 to 100,000 sub-concussions. And that's without the big concussions where you sort of laid out on the floor. Last few years, like even like the birth of my children, like that's starting to go. And there's there's things where, like Steph, the other day it was our tenth wedding anniversary, and she made us a drink. It was a pina colada, and we're drinking it. And she's like, "Oh, you remember that?" And I was like, "What's it?" And she's like, "This was our wedding drink." On your worst days, how difficult has it been? Well, I've stood on the train platform and I was going to jump in front of the train. Because I used to think people that done commit suicide were weak. And then you, you're there and you feel, feel like you're the most selfless person by thinking you should do it. Because you just feel like you don't want everyone around you. And you don't want to let them down and they'd be better off without you. He has written an autobiography about his experiences, which has required the recollections of his friends and former colleagues who shared his World Cup success, like his then coach, Sir Clive Woodward. I look back, I'm quite proud of what I did in terms of the medical side with bringing in full-time doctors. But, you know, they were also doing their best. They were working with the knowledge they knew, knew at the time. But at the time, was it never discussed in the dressing room, in the coaching room? Did you never think, actually, we're putting these players in harm? Not, not, be, not based on what we're doing, but because that, that was the game. That was the game you played, that was the game I played. It's the way you, where you coached it. You've still seen some funny incidents where you see bangs to the head and the player carries on. That just can't happen anymore. The biggest thing to me is going forward is, is just, you know, I'd like to see a serious team put together, headed up by one of the world's leading experts on this. A serious budget to say we are going to get some conclusions about this that will help, you know, on, a, on, a, on an immediate basis as well. At the moment, does it feel just like lip service in terms of what's been coming out from the sport? I think if I'm brutally honest, yes. Steve is one of more than 400 former rugby union players who are taking legal action against the sports governing bodies for allegedly failing to protect them. World Rugby has told us we never stand still in our mission to further cement rugby as the most progressive sport on player welfare. This commitment has former players at its heart, but has also driven evidence-based moves to enhance player safety through science, technology, laws and research progression. Would you, if you had your time again, play rugby? No. Would you let your kids play rugby? No, not at the moment. He might be a World Cup winner, but Steve hopes his biggest impact on the game is still to come, improving player welfare so the next generation will be able to remember their greatest sporting moments. Amy Lewis, ITV News.